Guys, the used market is a scary place and some of you may not be willing to take that venture. So what we have right here is an all new parts, $400 gaming PC, but in all honesty, the compromise we had to make to make this possible might be even scarier than the used market. But before we dive into the build, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Building a PC using only new parts might give you some peace of mind, but it's no secret that throwing in some used deals will help you save money and get substantially better performance for the price. One of our favorite places to shop for insane used deals is Jawa.gg. Jawa is the community where great hardware and tech is sold at reasonable prices between gamers and not scalpers or scammers. Jawa even has a pre-vetted list of verified sellers that are selling working high quality products at amazing prices to ensure there's no price gouging. When you pair this with the buyer protections, you can shop on Jawa with confidence, unlike other used sites. And if you have some spare parts lying around, or even if you want to take on a new side hustle, selling on the number one PC gamer marketplace is super easy and they have tons of seller perks. Jawa will even buy GPUs directly and offers honest pricing, free shipping, and no hidden fees to make it as easy as possible. If you're interested in learning more, head over to jawa.gg today or check out the links in the description down below. Big thanks to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to it. Now, the reason we're a little bit scared about this all new parts build is this right here. This is a case and power supply combo from Allied Gaming and we only paid $49 for it, meaning we got a case and power supply for $49. There's some budget cases you can't even get for that price point. And in all honesty, this is probably going to work just fine. But when you're talking about something that's $49 and you're getting a power supply involved in it, the power supply is definitely going to be of lesser quality. So there's always a bit of risk when building with these. But again, in our experience, we built with these and I feel like years ago, we used to use these a lot. They work just fine, but but inherently, again, it's gonna be cheaper quality. So we'll see what that quality looks like. And the case itself isn't anything crazy, but I think it has an RGB fan. Definitely reminds me of the good old days, Roswell. Man, they used to be the kings of including power supplies and cases. And this actually isn't too bad looking on the outside. That's not that bad. So we have a mesh front. We do have acrylic though, so that's not great. And I will say the reviews on this case and power supply combo were hit or miss. Some people saying it works fine. Some people saying the power supply didn't work right. So they replaced <laughs> the power supply. So with like an average star rating of like three and a half stars, little bit of hesitancy here on recommending this, but we're gonna build with it anyways. And the parts that we have make sense for this price point. So we take out this, well, not great acrylic side panel, again, acrylic, but hey, it's $49 for a whole case and power supply. And and uh, yeah, we see a 550 watt power supply. The actual power uh, profile here is we only have 360 watts on 12 volt rail, which is fine, but um, it's a very basic power supply. Again, I wouldn't go high end or anything with this, but if it works, I mean, we saved a ton of money going this route. But let's go and talk about the other parts because there are more compromises with the rest of the parts. I wanted to see what it looked like. I didn't think it was gonna be this distracting or loud. I'm sorry. Oh, we're just gonna keep going. Here we go. Yeah, let's, let's do the other one. Okay. You know, in terms of uh, peel experience, give it like a five out of 10. Nothing like, uh, what is it, X XFX or one of those cards that we've had like, peel where it comes off of 20 pieces in it. It's, it's not like, yeah. it's a little bit dark. It's actually not that bad. It's not bad. Just don't touch it because it will scratch. It will scratch really bad. But again, we're gonna go over the parts for this PC build and uh, at around $400, we didn't mention the price, $400 all new parts and we have an actual graphics card. I think this is gonna do pretty well. It's just a matter of will those compromises we made be worth it. So for the st the so for the star of this build, the i3-12100F, which is a four core, eight thread, we paid $94.99 at the time of filming this video. And as Matt mentioned to me before we started this video, no, we did not go with the absolute most cheapest parts. Who wants that? We wanted to make this build somewhat replicable and also somewhat appealing. So four cores and eight threads, Gen 4 support, it's a pretty good CPU out of the box with a really good stock cooler. Now this motherboard right here may just look like a normal ASRock H610M, but it is an HVS instead of the typical HDS or one of those other lines where it actually does not have any M.2 support. So that may be where they were able to cut some costs in this motherboard, but you do have DDR4 support uh, up to 3200 megahertz. You also do have two and a half inch support so you can plug in your SATA cables for an SSD or hard drive as well. And we were able to get this for $69.99. That's pretty cheap for a new board. And speaking of RAM, we were able to get this team group. Am I, oh, I'm, I'm upside down and backwards. And speaking of the RAM, we we're able to get this team group 16 gig kit. And this is DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. And it is pretty basic. I mean, it's just silver RAM. We actually buy this stuff all the time, actually. So it's pretty decent stuff. And the fact that we were able to pay $35 even for it, pretty cool. And hey, ladies and gentlemen, storage.
damage. It's gone up a little bit this year, but we were able to get this crucial drive, which is a BX500, and it's a 480 gig SSD. Kind of a weird size, but that is plenty of storage, and we were able to pick this up for $37.99. And then for the graphics card, we have this Sparkle Elf Intel Arc A380. So this right here is a six gig VRAM card, and I mean, just look at it, it's so cute. It's just a little baby card. And uh, this is basically close to like a 1650 and RX 6500 XT, but you can pick these up for $99.99, typically sometimes even cheaper. So realistically, for the price to performance, this card made the most sense. And then obviously Matt talked about this wonderful case, which was $50 that came with the power supply. Making this build, we paid $386.96 before tax, so it's pretty good. So yeah, now that we've talked about this build, let's put it together and see if it'll explode. Just kidding, let's see if it actually works and can play some games. Jonah, this is so oh, hard. So you know those compromises we talked about? Well, we're already seeing one major issue. One of the fans is bad. And before you say, is it plugged in? It is plugged in. They use this little hub that has a proprietary connector for the lighting and the power of the fan. And we did plug it up and unplug it multiple times, try different ports and everything. And this one fan is just not spinning. So uh, the rating for this uh, combo is obviously warranted being around three stars, but hey, the system posted at least, we're in the BIOS. We're gonna get Windows installed and see if, how this thing actually performs in gaming. But Again, this combo at the very beginning, we definitely prefaced was a gamble and to try to make this the price that it is, we had to go with it, but I don't know if it was really worth it in the long run. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're playing Apex Legends on April Fool's Day, and we are currently running max FOV with pretty much the lowest settings possible and 1080p, no real upscaling or anything. And uh, yeah, this is the Mozam Burr. <laughs> Wait, they see the different names of them? Oh, the Mozam Blam. Blam and the Mozam Burr. Is this an, oh, it's a, it's a Kraber. Oh, no shit. They use the Mozambique, but they changed the uh, actual... I, was, I noticed only had one bullet, but the PC itself is running really good. I mean, we're getting, you know, over 100 FPS in Apex standards. That's plenty for me. So far, so good. Oh, what? <laughs> Dude, I, I can't with this freaking thing, man. Don't worry, I'll kill someone eventually. Don't worry, I'll kill someone eventually. What? I took my kill. Hi guys, crack. Alright, I got What in the freak is going on in here? I feel like I haven't hit a shot in like a year. <laughs> what they said? Boop! <laughs> And that's the game, ladies and gentlemen. That's the game. Well, that started off really fun, and then I started to really hate it once people figured out the bird. But the boost itself ran really well on Apex. I mean, we're close to 100 FPS the whole time. That's important. All right, gamers, we are now in Fortnite. The volume is very low. Uh, we are running DX12 performance settings. We'll see if things hold up when we land, but we're really pushing this thing hard right now. Definitely the CPU, that i3 is at 100%, GPU is almost at 100%, but um, it's a 60 FPS drop, it's not too stuttery. Where are the memes at? Where are the memes at? Fortnite's like, I ain't doing no memes. <laughs> They're Fortnite said we are April Fools. We are April Fools, this entire game is April Fools. Okay, not bad. I'm aggressively pushing this person. Wow. I thought they were actually gonna get away. I think they didn't jump through the window. If they jumped through the window and got that gun, they would have killed me. FPS, this is better. I mean, shout out to Intel Arc. Their GPUs have gotten better, and this is uh, running pretty good for performance settings, and somebody is rushing at me. <laughs> <laughs> Z! 
sale. Now, yes, the obvious question, and again, that's not the point of the video, is you could go use parts and get better performance for the same price or less. But for new, this has definitely come a long way versus the, uh, well, you have to get an APU route. Like this is definitely better than that. I remember that, like the 2200G or the 220GE. That was definitely the classic combo of the day. <laughs> God damn! Oh, he guessed where he was. Oh, hey! Wow. Literally on his head. Oh my god, three <laughs> shots. <laughs> what is this game? Oh, 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 I ran out. No. Oh, no, I lagged. I'm just kidding, no. I didn't lag, actually. Uh, <laughs> I got nine kills, though, with that. You should pick that up, buddy. That thing is OP. Oh, but, he, he um, doesn't know. He doesn't know. He doesn't know about the overpoweredness of water bending. But so far, so good. Obviously, again, compromises with this new build. But in terms of the core specs of the A380 and the 1200F, it's working out really well. Uh, let's run some more demanding games, see what its limits are, run 3D Mark Time Spy, and then wrap this video up real quick and talk about this all new parts PC, which the badge did break, by the way, if you see the uh, one piece fell off. So it cannot go back on there. So sorry, Allied Gaming. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking our now no-name brand PC, <laughs> and it actually did a lot better than I thought it would. You know, the ARC A380, it seems like every month they have even better driver support than the previous, and that does show in some of our benchmarks as well. And yeah, as you can tell in Fortnite and Apex, performed better than the first time we tested the A380, and we paired with that i3, really good performance. In terms of more demanding titles, we did run Cyberpunk 1080p, we did use Intel's upscaling technology on balance, and got an average of 64 FPS and minimum of 53 to max of 76, which is actually pretty dang good. And on Spider-Man Miles Morales, again, using Intel's upscaling technology, we got an average of about 50 FPS. I would say that was a game that did push that A380 to its absolute limits. And of course, our 3D Mark Time Spy score was 4,149, which is a nine cent per point score. Not amazing, but again, we're talking all new parts here. We're talking using some stuff that's a little bit suspect. As you can see, our fans still not working. And we did mm -hmm. remove the logo, so we're now logo -less. But all in all, I think the i3 1200F and A380 is a really good combo. You can go with a ton of different options for the case and whatever and spend a little bit more money. More money. <laughs> more money. You get to edit this. This is great. In terms of getting a better case and power supply option, there's a lot of different things you can go with. In terms of an all-new parts build, I think we did pretty good. Let us know in the comments down below what you think. If you want to build this PC yourself, check those links in the description down below. They will be affiliate links. They will help us out. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our Twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. After some simple repairs, this PC will be for sale, probably local only, at PCRose.Tech for a really good price. Really good price, very discounted, along with all our other awesome PCs you can buy today over at PCBros.Tech. Use code TOSTYBROS2 on checkout. You'll save 2% your next purchase. See you guys later. Goodbye.